student scholars in association with Goa Headmasters Association. Welcome everybody. My name is Suraj Aldankar and today I am going to focus on the second geography lesson for the students of standard 10. As we know that India is a rich country as far as uh, natural vegetation and wildlife is concerned. India has more than 47,000 species of plants and um, nearly more than uh, 81,000 species of animals. So uh, uh, you can see some of the species uh, of animals here on the screen, uh, like lion, elephant, and then we have uh, other species uh, like microorganisms. Then we have a number of uh, aquatic animals as well. So India is rich as far as uh, flora and fauna is concerned. So here again, uh, I would like to focus. Uh, so we are going to discuss about the forest and wildlife in this lesson. But before I go to the actual lesson, let us uh, just recap what you have learned last year. In 9th standard, you also had a, a, almost the same lesson, uh, that is uh, natural vegetation and wildlife. And uh, you have seen the different uses of forest. Forests are of immense use to us. And if we can divide uh, the uses of forest, we can divide them into two parts, maybe from ecological point of view as well as for personal use. From ecological point of view, uh, forest helps us in uh, soil formation. Okay, humus provides humus. It provides shelter to wild animals. Okay, it helps in uh, bringing rainfall. Okay, it modifies the local climate and so many other uses, ecological uses of forests are there. If you look at general uses, like in our personal life, uh, many people depend upon forest for their livelihood. And uh, forest also supplies raw material to, uh, raw material to various industries. Okay, we also visit forested areas uh, for, uh, you know, uh, during our free time to enjoy the natural beauty. So, there are various uses of forest in our day-to-day -day life. So, let us uh, commence the second geography lesson for the students of Standard 10. That is forest and wildlife resources. As we know that uh, India is rich in forest and wildlife resources. And, uh, we have a number of plants and animals in our environment. We share our planets with the millions of living beings. And we have seen uh, in the previous slides that there are a number of plants and animals uh, which are there in our environment. And in this complex web of ecological system, we are a small part and we are dependent on other living beings for our survival. So we all are part of something called biodiversity. Now, what is biodiversity? Biodiversity means existence of millions of living beings side by side in the environment. If I can put it in other words, biodiversity is immensely rich in wildlife and cultivated species, diverse in form and function, but closely integrated in a system through multiple network of interdependencies. So, uh, there is immense biodiversity in this world and in India. You can see here in this picture that uh, we have different living organisms and we are all dependent on each other for our survival. So, why is biodiversity so important to us? Biodiversity is important to us because human beings depend upon biodiversity for its survival. We all are dependent on biodiversity for our survival. We cannot survive without the biodiversity. Now, why do I say this? Because 
pl the plants, the animals, the microorganisms, they recreate the quality of the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the soil that produces our food without which we cannot survive. So, human beings are totally dependent on biodiversity for their survival because plants, animals and microorganisms recreate the quality of the air we breathe, the water we drink and the soil that produces most of our food. Now, forests also play an important role in the ecosystem as we have studied that in an ecosystem, living and non-living things are in turn dependent on each other. Forest plays a very important role in the ecosystem because uh, uh, as these are the primary producers on which all other living beings depend. Okay, you can have a look at this picture here. Forests are the primary producers and uh, as I have mentioned, uh, the forests are of various uh, uses to us. They are useful to us in various ways. So, uh, they are the primary producers on which all other living beings depend. So, I'll just repeat why biodiversity is important. Biodiversity is important to human beings because we depend on biodiversity for our survival. Okay. The plants, animals and microorganisms recreates the quality of the air we breathe, the water we drink and the soil that produces our food without which we cannot survive and forests play, forest play an important role in the ecosystem as they are the primary producers on which all other living beings depend. Now in India, we have lots of variety of plants and animals. Therefore, India is one of the richest country in biological diversity. If, I can, if you can look at the screen, uh, it says that it has 8%, that is 1.6 million of the total number of species in the world, some yet to be discovered. But lately, our flora and fauna has come under great stress, okay? And many uh, mammals as well as flora and uh, if I could say flora and fauna have come under great stress and some are even categorized as critical. Now, when I say critical here, it means that they are on the verge of extinction. They may become extinct and they may disappear from a particular area or a particular region or a particular state or a particular uh, country or, a, or say from the world. So, when we refer to critical here, we are talking about that they are on the verge of extinction and you can see all these animals are critical and some of them even have become extinct, okay, in some parts of the world, okay. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, the mountain quail, we have the pink headed duck, we have the forest spotted owlet, uh, we have the plants, we have uh, Hobardia heptaneuron, we have Madhuka and Cygnus and uh, here we have the cheetah wrongly spelled here as leopard, uh, the cheetah. So the, all these animals are classified as critical, they are all critical. You can see uh, clearly now a picture of cheetah here and uh, the pink headed duck. So uh, again uh, there are other uh, birds also like mountain quail, forest, spotted owlet. So all these species of plants and animals are critical and some of them have become extinct in some parts of the world. So accordingly, uh, the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources has classified the species of plants and animals into different categories. Okay, I repeat, IUCN has classified the species of plants and animals into different categories. Okay, I'll just read uh, briefly the first categories and then, and then I'll go in the detail, detail explanation of these uh, uh, categories. First is the normal species, then we have the endangered species, we have the vulnerable species, we have the rare species, we have the endemic species, 
and we have the extinct species okay so now uh, uh, most of you must have understood by looking at the name only you can uh, just understand uh, what uh, what will be uh, you know their uh, position here normal species are those species whose population level are considered to be normal for their survival that means their population level is normal okay they are, they don't have any problems as far as their population is concerned and which are the species uh, some of the examples of such species are cattle rodent sal and pine so these are normal species then we have the second category that is endangered species the name itself suggests that these species are in danger of extinction they are in danger of extinction and survival of such species is difficult if the negative factors that have led to the decline okay in their population continues to operate so endangered species are those species which are in danger of extinction any time they they may become extinct and they may disappear from a particular area region as i have said or state or a country or the world so survival of such species is difficult if the negative factors which we are going to discuss later on in this topic continue to operate and their population will continue to decline and they will some day become extinct the next category uh, i'll just explain uh, which animals are classified in this we have the black bug we have crocodile we have the wild indian ass we have the indian rhino we have the lion tail macaque and we have sand guy all these animals i'll just repeat okay i'll just put it on your screen again all these animals are classified into endangered category then we have the vulnerable species these are the species whose population has declined to a level from which they may they are likely to move into endangered category that means that their population was more earlier but now it has declined and they are likely to go into endangered category and we know once they move into endangered category there is a possibility that they may become extinct so vulnerable species are those species whose population has declined to a level from where it is likely to move into endangered category in the near future if the negative factors continue to operate against them which are the examples here we have the blue ship we have the gangetic dolphin and we have the asiatic elephant all these an, uh, animals are classified as vulnerable species then we have the next species rare species the name is is self explanatory the name itself is self explanatory rare means you know you can refer here the word small okay species with very small population they have very less population may move into endangered or vulnerable category if the negative factors affecting them continue to operate so all those species with small population which may move into endangered category or vulnerable category if the negative factors continue to operate against them then those species are classified as rare species okay examples here are himalayan brown bear we have the wild buffalo we have the desert fox we have the hornbill okay so these are all examples of rare species they are rarely found in certain areas the population is very very less then we have the endemic species okay now endemic species are those species which are found in a particular area 
or a specific area usually they are isolated by a geographical or a natural barrier so what are endemic species endemic species are those which are found in particular area usually isolated by natural or a geographical geographical barrier in this we'll have uh, the andaman til andaman wild pig the nicobar pigeon and mithun which is found in arunachal pradesh okay so these are examples of endemic species which are found in specific or particular particular area then we have the next category of species that is extinct species again the name is self explanatory okay these species are the species which are not found okay these are the species which are not found after searches of known or likely areas where they may occur so even after searching them okay uh, in the known areas and likely areas where they are, they are supposed to be found but they are still not found in those areas then we say that these species are extinct species okay like in this we have two examples we have the asiatic cheetah and we have the pink head duck in this category we have put two uh, species of animals okay uh, we have the cheetah asiatic cheetah and the pink headed or pink head duck now cheetah is considered to be was considered to be the fastest fastest among the land mammals okay which used to move at a speed of around 112 kilometers per hour but it was it is declared uh, it was declared actually it was declared as extinct species in the year 1952 in india so let us uh, see the different categories with the description of and we'll take the key words in that we'll see the key words okay let us say normal species the key word words are your nor population is normal population is normal then in endangered species key word is they are in danger of extinction they are in danger of extinction then vulnerable species key words are they may move into endangered category they may move into endangered category then rare species are the species with small population okay there are species with small population and endemic species endemic species are those species which are found only in certain areas or particular areas those are called endemic species then there is continuation of uh, the definition but these are the key words extinct species which are not found after searching which are not found after searching in the likely areas where they may occur so these are these are the six different uh, categories of animals uh, which are classified by the international union for conservation of nature and natural resources let us we may discuss much about the negative factors which are affecting the flora and the fauna of our country so uh, uh, there are many negative factors in fact but uh, we have to see it in a different way now that we are also directly or indirectly using all these resources in our day to day life like we we use wood we use fodder we use medicine okay uh, we use barks of the trees all these are coming from forest so we ourselves are depleting our forest and wildlife resources but these were some of the major or some of the negative factors uh which led to the depletion of flora and fauna i'll first focus on uh, these factors now uh when i say negative factors there are many other negative factors but we'll cover these factors first now the greatest damage on indian forest was inflicted during the colonial period we know which is the colonial period right 
when we were ruled by the British. And during this period, there were lots of damage done to the flora and fauna of our country. And the reasons were due to expansion of railways, due to expansion of agriculture, commercial and scientific forestry, and also due to the mining activities which were carried out during, the, during that particular period. So, greatest damage was inflicted on Indian forest during the colonial period. You can see uh, uh, due to railways, then mining, some of the habitat destruction was taking place for different developmental activities. Then uh, deforestation was taking place during that time. Okay, now, but it is still continuing. So forest areas are still, still being cleared for agriculture today also. And we have a, a record of this between 1951 and 1980, according to the Forest Survey of India, over 26,000 square kilometers of forest area was converted into agricultural land all over India. The tribal belts of the northeastern and the central India have also been deforested uh, or degraded by shifting cultivation, which is called zoom cultivation, a type of slash and burn agriculture. So there are various causes for the depletion of flora and fauna in India. Okay, uh, I have a picture of shifting cultivation here for you. You can see a, a patch of land is cleared here. Okay, and then that, is, uh, that uh, part is burnt and then peop, uh, agriculture is practiced uh, in that particular area. So we have uh, shifting cultivation. Okay, so uh, there are other negative factors also that can cause depletion of flora and fauna. fauna like habitat destruction, habitat destruction, hunting and poaching, over exploitation, environmental pollution, poisoning, forest fire. These are also causes or the negative factors which have led to the depletion of flora and fauna. Okay. So hunting, then uh, you know, uh, poaching of tiger here, you can be seen here also, poaching activity. Then uh, forest fire, then habitat destruction, uh, destruction taking place in this particular area. So, so also the large scale development projects have also contributed significantly to the loss of forest. Since 1951, over 5,000 square kilometers of forest land was cleared for river valley projects. Like you can see here, uh, dams. Okay, is one of the river valley project. So, lots of areas have been also cleared for developmental activities. And clearing of forest is still going on uh, with projects like uh, Narmada Sagar project in Madhya Pradesh. Then, we can also say agricultural uh, expansion as we have seen in the past that agricultural expansion was also one of the reason for destruction of uh, the plants in, uh, in India. Then with the next cause is mining, deforestation due to mining. Mining is also responsible for the destruction of forest. Okay, now here one example I can quote here, Buxa Tiger Reserve is seriously, uh, Buxa Tiger Reserve is seriously threatened by ongoing dolomite mining in West Bengal. Now what has happened because of dolomite mining in this particular area is that it has disturbed the natural habitat of many species and it has also blocked the migration route of several animals including the great Indian elephant. So we have seen some of the uh, other causes uh, uh, which, are, uh, response, uh, which are actually taking place because of the developmental activities like uh, agricultural expansion uh, is one of the cause then large scale development projects, deforestation due to mining. So these, all these factors are actually leading, leading to decline in our biodiversity, natural uh, destruction of natural habitat, hunting and poaching, forest fire, okay, then environmental pollution, over exploitation, all these factors are leading to 
declining in biodiversity. Plus, other factors are also responsible, like inequitable consumption, okay, unequal access, and difference in sharing of responsibilities. Those factors are also there. So there are a number of factors which are responsible for the depletion of, uh, of flora and uh, fauna in India. Now what happens because of this? See, when there is depletion of flora and fauna, we also have the biological, it is not only a biological loss, it is also a cultural loss because we lose the cultural diversity in certain regions. Like you can see on your screen now, these are the pictures of the tribal people and tribal people traditionally have their homes in the forest. And when there is destruction or loss of, bio, there is biological loss due to destruction of forest, then it is a loss of cultural diversity for these people also because, because such losses are uh, increasingly marginalized and impoverished many indigenous and forest dependent communities because they are directly dependent on forest for their various components uh, of life which they require like uh, you know food, drink, medicine, culture and spirituality etc. So it is also affecting the people living in the forest areas like tribal and indirect impact of degradation such as severe drought or deforestation induces floods which hits the poor the hardest. So, so the biological loss is also strongly correlated with the loss of cultural diversity. Now such losses have increasingly marginalized and impoverished many indigenous and forest dependent communities because these communities directly depend upon forest for various components which are required in their life like uh, food, drink, medicine, culture, spirituality. Now you can see here in this picture, picture of uh, tribal people here and tribal people traditionally have their homes in the forest. So their life is getting affected. It's a cultural loss for them, a loss of cultural diversity for them. It also impacts uh, it also has other impacts like uh, drought or deforestation induced floods. So the poverty in some cases may be a direct outcome of environmental degradation. Therefore, forest and wildlife are vital to the quality of life and environment in the subcontinent. But due to this, women, women are affected more than men because women bear the major responsibility of collecting all the subsistence needs like food, wood, water and when there is destruction of forest and wildlife uh, and or when there is depletion of forest and wildlife, the problems or the hardship of the women increases because sometimes they have to walk for kilometers to bring these resources and what happens due to this? This may cause serious health problems for women and negligence of home and children because of increased hour of hours of work, which often has serious social implications. So who suffers more due to depletion of flora and fauna? It is the women who are living in this area because women bear the major responsibility of collection of subsist basic subsistence needs. And as these resources are depleted, the problems or the hardship of the women increases as they have to walk for a long distance and uh, because of this, this causes serious health problem and they also neglect, uh, neglect their homes and children due to increased hour of work. Okay, you can see here in this picture, the hardship of women which they face due to depletion and children their children also suffer sometimes because they are totally neglected due to increased hour of, hours of work. So therefore, conservation of forest and wildlife is very, very essential. Okay. So we need to conserve our forest and wildlife. Now, why should we do it? Due to rapid decline in wildlife population and forestry. The wildlife population and forestry is declining 
rapidly so there so we have to see that we conserve our forest and wildlife conservation also preserves the ecological diversity which is there in the ecosystem and it also supports uh, our life support system that is our that is air water and soil conservation is also needed to preserve the genetic diversity of plants and animals for better breeding for better growth of species and breeding now fisheries too are heavily dependent on the maintenance of aquatic diversity so we need to focus on conservation of forest and wildlife and these are the reasons some of the reasons due to rapid decline in wildlife population and forestry conservation preserves the ecological diversity and our life support system that is air water and soil conservation is needed to preserve the genetic diversity of plants and animals for better growth of species and breeding fisheries too are heavily dependent on the maintenance of aquatic bio diversity so therefore what the government did government decided to pass certain laws and government was also insisted by the environmentalist uh, conservationist to pass these laws to protect the forest and wildlife and therefore in the year 1972 the indian government passed the wildlife protection act okay indian wildlife protection act was passed in 1972 let us see some of the provisions in this act according to this act and all in uh, as all india and all india list of protected species was published now why this was done to protect the remaining population of certain endangered species by banning hunting restricting trade in wildlife giving legal protection to the habitats of the animals central government and many state governments also established national parks and wildlife sanctuaries as we have uh, bondla wildlife sanctuary in goa so uh, central government also announced several projects for protecting specific animals which were gravely threatened specific projects were made for to protect certain animals which were gravely threatened like uh, you know uh, we can see what happened after this act was passed hunting was banned then wildlife sanctuaries were established like we have the bondla wildlife sanctuary then specific projects like project tiger and other projects uh, was started by the government like project rhino kashmir stag all these projects were uh, you know uh, for crocodiles okay all these projects were started by the government and then uh, later on certain more animals were also added to this list to the protected list like indian elephant asiatic lion indian elephant asiatic lion the great indian bustard snow leopard so these were some of the other animals which were also added in the protected list later on so that they can get protection and we can protect these animals okay now conservation projects are also focusing on biodiversity rather than focusing on few of its components so in the notification under wildlife act of 1980 and 1986 several hundred butterflies moths beetles and one dragonfly have been added to the list of protected species and in 1991 for the first time plants were added to the list starting with six species so these are all the other species which are also been given importance as far as protection is and conservation is concerned now the next topic is types and distribution of forest and wildlife resources now most of the forests are either owned or managed by the government in india and managed they are managed through the forest department and other government departments accordingly we have classified the forest into different types okay the first classification which we have here is the reserve forest now reserve forest are regarded as most valuable 
as far as the forest and wildlife are con concerned because they look after the conservation of forest and wildlife and different states of india where we have majority of the reserve forest areas are mentioned here we have jammu kashmir now uh, it is uh, being divided uh, into two parts uh, one is jammu kashmir and ladakh and both are union territories now then we have andhra pradesh again uh, there is a bifurcation of andhra pradesh uh, we have uh, telangana and andhra pradesh then uttarakhand kerala tamil nadu west bengal and maharashtra all these states have a large area under reserve forest the next category of forest is the protected forest now one third of the forest area is under protected forest and what they do they protect the forest from any further depletion and the states of bihar haryana punjab himachal pradesh orissa and rajasthan have large number of forest under protected forests then we have the unclassed forest now these are the forest and wasteland that belongs to a uh, government as well as private individual and communities and uh, most of this type of forest uh, you will find in the northeastern states and parts of gujarat they have high percentage of unclassed forest and they are managed by the local authorities so these are three different categories of forest i'll just put a map for you all uh, which highlights reserve forest which are shown in green here now these are the states which have large part of their forest as reserve forest highlighted in green and the dotted parts uh, states which are highlighting the protected forest so uh, as we know that uh, gujarat and most of the north eastern states they have uh, unclassed forest now protected uh, forest and reserve forest together they are called permanent forest states okay so protected forest and reserve forest they are referred to as permanent forest states and these are maintained for the purpose of producing timber and other products as well as the main reason is protecting the forest the main reason here also is protecting the forest and also uh, other forest produce like uh, uh, are obtained from these forest states so uh, madhya pradesh has the largest area under the permanent forest now as i have said the permanent forest includes the reserve forest as well as the protected forests so now we have seen the role of the government in protecting some of the things which the government has done or some of the steps which the government has taken to protect the flora and fauna of our country now let us shift our attention to some of the important contributions of the communities where the community has contributed in protecting the forest and wildlife of our country okay as we know that uh, forest are traditionally homes of many people and these people themselves are interested in protecting these areas because they know that only these can help them to have their long term livelihoods as they are totally dependent on these areas but there are some important movements like in, uh, in sarishka tiger reserve in rajasthan villagers have fought against mining by citing the wildlife protection act now this happened in rajasthan where the people fought against the mining by citing the wildlife protection act again another example from rajasthan is uh, the alwar district five the inhabitants of five villages of alwar district of rajasthan have declared 1002 hectares of forest as bhairodev dakau sonjuri 
where they themselves do not allow hunting okay and forest and wildlife are protected from or against outside encroachment both these things happened or movement happened in incident happened in the state of rajasthan then we have the chipko movement which occurred in the himalayas where uh, deforestation was successfully resisted they stopped deforestation so the chipko movement in himalayas has successfully resist or resisted against deforestation and they have shown that a forestation of indigenous species is possible so these were the three important very important movements which happened or which were conducted or organized by the community to protect the flora and fauna in india okay i'll just show you the map this is the alwar district in rajasthan this is the map of india here we have the alwar district in rajasthan okay so again uh, i'll just put the same uh, screen for you all that in sarishka tiger reserve what happened uh, there was people fought against the mining by citing wildlife protection act and uh, in alwar district of rajasthan the villagers declared 1002 hectares of forest as bhairodev dakav sonchuri and then the chipko movement which successfully resisted deforestation in the himalayas and practiced afforestation and now attempts are also made to revive the traditional conservation method or developing new methods of ecological farming by the farmers and citizen groups like we have the beech bachao andolan and now danya in tiri so uh, farmers and citizen groups are also making attempt to revive the traditional conservation methods or developing new methods which will help in ecological farming and they have shown that uh, adequate level of diversified cropping is possible or crop production is possible without the use of synthetic chemicals and they are economically uh, viable also so these groups like beech bachao andolan and now dhanya has also uh, are also attempting to revive the traditional uh, conservation method and develop new methods of ecological farming another important step uh, which uh, which took place in conservation of forest and wildlife was the joint forest management as the name suggest joint joint means together so in joint forest management the local communities are involved in restoring and managing the degraded forest land which is actually managed and controlled by the forest department but they are helped by the local people in restoring and managing the degraded forest land according to the joint forest management program now the first state to pass uh, such a resolution was the state of orissa and it was passed in 1988 you can see here uh, that uh, some officials are discussing uh, with the villagers uh, who are involved in the joint forest management program so what is what are the features of the joint forest management program now joint forest management depends upon the formation of local institutions that undertake protective activities mostly on the degraded forest land managed by the forest department so success depends upon the local institution the people in the village who undertake the protective activities and why do you do you think people will get involved in this because people are also benefited there are many like minded people who want to conserve and protect the environment and therefore they also take part in such activities another reason communities get uh, benefits like non timber forest produce they are entitled for benefits once they protect these areas once they manage these areas once they do certain protective activities and whatever benefits are there these are shared they get a share 
in the non timber forest produces and they also get share in the timber harvested by successful protection when the trees are successfully protected and wherever uh, whenever the timber is available then they also get share in the timber harvested by successful protection so for because of all these reasons many people many communities they participate in the joint forest management because they are nature lovers also as well as they are also getting different types of benefits just want to highlight some of the non timber products which are available in the forest for the people so they get share in this uh, whenever these products are there they also get share in these products because they are the part of the joint forest management so uh, students we have covered the entire chapter that is the forest and wildlife resources uh, which is the second chapter in your textbook so uh, with this uh, we come towards the end of this lesson that is the second lesson in geography forest and wildlife thank you very much